But one thing I just want to touch on in this passage, you know, verse 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So this verse really is the key verse that people use to, to exhort you to be in church, to say, hey, don't forsake the assembly. Make sure you are planted in the house of God so that you can flourish like we read in Psalm 92. But then the question arises is, well, then how often should I go to church? How, how often should I go to church until I am forsaking the assembly? Well, you know, number one, if you're not going to church at all, obviously you've forsaken the assembly. You know, if you say, I don't want to be in church, that is forsaking the assembly because you are, are not even trying to, to get into the assembly of God. And, you know, you have to be like a seed. A seed has to be planted in the ground first before it can even grow. So, you know, it's a good idea for us to be planted in a house of God somewhere so that we can... Um, really promote the growth of that seed. You know, it's funny that, you know, some seeds don't need the ground to grow. You know, you put seed in a, in a cup of water and it'll start to sprout and start to grow. So, you know, I, I think you can take that analogy and you can say, well, you know, you will be better in ground to grow. But, you know, if you're not in ground, you can still grow. You can still, you know, read the Bible yourself and listen to sermons online and grow as a Christian, but you won't grow as good um, as you would if you're in a church. So then the question arises, well, how many times should you go to church? So I'm not forsaking the assembly, but how often should I go to church where I'm not forsaking the assembly? And, you know, questions like this, you know, really, you know, can reveal somebody's heart. But also, you know, there's a couple of principles in the Word of God where we can use to answer questions like this. Um, and, and the two that I think of, are, you know, number one in Romans where it talks about, you know, uh, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And then in James where it says, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So there's a bit of self-analysis there where, you know, the Bible says, if you, if you, whatsoever is not of faith is sin, it means if you don't believe it's right to do, then it's sin. And James is saying, if you know to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. It's saying, if you think you should be doing something and you don't do it, then it's sin. But, you know, this is a relative measure because, you know, what I think is good to do may not be what you think is good to do. Or what I believe something is right. And these are gray areas. I'm not talking about clear areas like salvation or whatever. I, I, these are what the Bible calls doubtful disputations. So it might be dress. It might be, you know, the length of your hair. It might be what colors you feel are girly or manly. You know, I honestly think, you know, pink shirts and things like that are girly. But to, to say that the color pink is girly, that's just a conviction I have. It's not something the Bible actually says because the Bible doesn't say that pink is girly. Um, so, you know, there are things like this where we have this principle of, you know, how we can judge things like that. So, to, to, so, so, how often should we go to church is really the question. You know, because let's say a person goes to church once a week. Are they forsaking the assembly? You know, we have church once a week here, so you'll feel that, you know, you're not forsaking the assembly because you're, you're, you're going to every church gathering that we have. But let's say you went once a month. Are you forsaking the assembly? Because you haven't forsaken the assembly. You're just not going as often as anyone else. Well, how we could judge that is, well, if you think that you're not doing the right thing by missing church, then you are in sin. So if you can, in good conscience, miss church every second week and, and, and you're okay with that, then yeah, okay, I can say, well, maybe you're not sinning. Maybe you're not, doing, you're not uh, necessarily doing wrong. Or, or if, you, you know, if you think you should be going to church, like you, you know, you're going twice a week and you wake up on Sunday and you say, you know what, I really should be there. I need the preaching. I need the fellowship. And you don't go, then you are in sin. Because to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. But does the Bible say that you must go to church every week? No, it doesn't. It just, doesn't, it just says, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Well, then you say, well, but if, you're not, if church is on and you're not there, aren't you forsaking the assembling of yourselves together? So aren't you, aren't you in sin then? Because church is happening and you're not there. Well, the reason why I don't hold to that position is because what if church meets multiple times a week? You know, like what if you work on a Wednesday night or on a Sunday morning and you can't make it? You know, are you sinning? Should a person quit their job in order to make it to church? I don't think they're in sin if they work during church. I think, um, you know, I, I would definitely encourage, you know, if, if you want to be part of our church, you know, you're going to have to not work Sundays because otherwise you can't be part of this church, right? So, 
you know, there's an element there that if you want to be part of this church, then you probably would want to, you know, leave your job in order to make it. But it's not a sin to work during church. Um, so what was the, sorry, I'm sort of mixing myself on the head. I hope I'm making myself clear. But, you know, you say, well, what if you were to skip one Sunday? Are you in sin? Well, what if a church had multiple gatherings a week? How many of those per week would you have to go to to make sure that you're not forsaking the assembly? So you see how like, if we make a rule where you have to make it go to every gathering, which is not what the Bible says, it just says don't forsake the assembly. But if you make a man-made rule and say we well, have to make it to every gathering, what happens when a church has four or five gatherings a week? You know, some churches do. They have Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then sometimes they'll have like a Tuesday night prayer meeting, and then they have like the Saturday night social event, uh, to the point where you're just like living there. And, uh, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not condemning those people. But then it's just... What I'm getting at is some people don't have the schedule to be able even to do that. But then are they in sin just because they're not at every single church gathering? Yeah, maybe a single person without young children can do that. But my point is we just want to be able to differentiate what's a man-made rule, which is you need to be at every church gathering, and what the Bible actually says, which is don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. So if you're not going to church at all, I think we can clearly say you are in sin. But how many times you go to church I think that's something between you and God and between your conscience, whether you are in church as much as you can be. And really, the Bible says, you know, every, everything we do, we do to the glory of God. So we should be striving for the maximum. I mean, if you have a heart that is saying, what's the least amount of church I can go to until I'm right with God? I mean, you've got the wrong frame of mind. You should be thinking, how often can I go? What's the most I can do? And I think that's a heart that pleases God.